And we have another very special treat. A gentleman by the name of Thomas is going to come up here. Thomas, come on up here, Thomas. This is a, uh, uh, this is for me, thank you. It is different. Yeah. Hold on, this is for you. Okay, hold on. I, I, I've got to share with you that uh, before Thomas shares that uh, I am pleasantly surprised that he made it this far. <laughs> when I first met Thomas, I, I didn't think that we would be here today. Amen. Hey, this isn't so bad. Sherry Keys said it's like death. I like public speaking. It'll work. Um, most people that come down here have already been sentenced, usually for a small amount of time. I'm facing some serious charges in East Tennessee. Uh, I had a sawed-off shotgun on one charge. They had me for a sale of Schedule Two crystal meth. Sale of Schedule 3, Suboxone, and a DUI third count. With my present priors from California, if they wanted to max me out, I could get 30 years. So my lawyer told me about a place called Promise Land Ministries, a rehab, except it was in South Carolina. I called them four times and never returned the phone call. So I get online and I punch up Promise Land Ministries. There's one in South Carolina. There's one in Nicaragua. I couldn't go there. <laughs> There's one in Georgia and Crawfordville, Florida. <laughs> Crawfordville, Florida returned my phone call. While he returned the phone call, my wife answered the phone. I couldn't come to it because I was busy getting high. And, um, we scheduled a day for me to come down, I missed it. And then I missed another day to come down. Third try, we drove and I made it as far as Atlanta and turned around and went back. Well, I figured, hey, if they're not gonna keep playing with me. I called up and made one more time and that one I came down. And uh, just to kind of tell you, I was so bad off, I was smoking meth in the bathroom on the bus on the way down. Richie and Jeff picked me up. I gotta tell you, I was pretty spun at 12 o'clock at night. Got into the dorm, and then my life began to change. And um, I felt the spirit, probably, I guess it might have been October 15th. I came to the altar and had uh, an experience that I, the only time I felt before I was in the hospital on the ventilator. And uh, it felt good. And uh, I got baptized October 22nd. And then November 7th, I had a heart attack. November 8th, I had another heart attack. And uh, this one, I went to Mr. Ed, told him I wasn't feeling well, told him the symptoms. He said, you gotta go to the hospital. I went to the hospital with JJ. And uh, they found I had three clogged arteries. So they recommended open heart surgery. So uh, I thought I had a family in East Tennessee when I called them up there. I found out I didn't. When I went in for surgery, I thought I didn't have anybody except Jesus. I asked when they, right before they put me under, I asked if there was a Christian in there. This little girl came up, we prayed, and they pushed the button and I was out for 24 hours. When I awoke and I was able to get to the room, I called Glenn up, as I figured he'd say, hey, you know, you can't work, you gotta go. And Glenn said to me, your family will take care of you. <laughs> For a guy like me, who's labeled an ex-con, a drug dealer, a validated prison gang member in California, uh, many titles, that meant a lot. 
because the one thing I've gone up, even though I've committed a lot of crimes, I've done a lot of bad things in my life, your word means everything. And uh, I can't stand fake people. So I got out of the hospital for 10 weeks. So I was kind of light duty, couldn't enough to five pounds. <laughs> and then I went back to work. And uh, like, uh, what was funny was we were over at the lady's house. I had to go next door to turn off the water. <laughs> and the pastor came up to see how we were doing on the deck. And he asked JJ and Richie, where's Thomas? And he said, he went next door to turn off the water. He said, my God, you're going to kill him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, that's the way it's been. I'm sure Mr. Richie back there, he wouldn't want a whole crew of Thomases. <laughs> but I'm sure the one Thomas he had did add a little brightness and a little levity to the situation. Um, I have a lot of people to thank real fast. I'd like to thank Joe Brown, uh, Jeff, JJ, Jeff back there, and Miss Teresa. And Mr. Norm is not here for taking me to my doctor's appointments in the hospitals when I had to go. I'd like to thank Joe Brown and Miss Sharon for coming and visiting me in the hospital. Miss Sharon came up twice. I've met a lot. Um, I'd like to thank the ladies. We've been at the thrift store. Thank you for mess fixing what we mess up the two days a month we go there. Y'all work very hard. I'd like to thank Ms. Vera and the Hamill family for the sacrifice you make to make this program go forward. If you... I thank Mr. Ed and all the men at Promised Land. You guys are all my brothers, every one of you. Thank you. I thank Mr. Ritchie for the talks we had when I was in a very dark place, when I was ready to go back and you just told me you knew what was gonna happen if I did go back. You didn't tell me to make me stay, you just gave me some questions to ponder and I appreciate her talks. I consider you a slightly older brother, thank you very much. <laughs> JJ, what can I say, man? I gotta say this uh, before I, I go into what you've done for me. Everybody always wants a volunteer but not everybody wants a bulldog. Go UT. Uh, JJ was there when, uh, sorry, going, I snuck the phone during the hurricane, made a call home, found out some information. <laughs> found out some information. JJ was there for that. JJ was there when uh, I was in the emergency room. And uh, they called my wife and a man answered the phone. He was there for that. That wasn't a really good place where I wanted to be. He talked to me. Um, we've had a lot of spiritual talks. You've helped me out a lot. And uh, I don't consider you a leader at all. I do consider you a brother. Thanks again, JJ. Matt Gary, is he here? Matt, thank you, man. When I first got here, you prayed for prayed with me. I never ever did that before. I was the first time in that field that one day. And uh, you started to get the spirit in me, show me a better way of life, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I have two more thank yous. Mr. Hamill, you could have shut the door on me many times when I didn't show up for three times, when uh, I got, was better, came out of the hospital, you didn't. We've had a lot of talks. A guy like me crying in front of a younger guy isn't something I do, I do every day. <laughs> I appreciate what you've done with the ministry. I appreciate you showing me a better way. I appreciate you showing me the light. And I'll never forget when I was ready to go home 
and you were standing, sitting in front of me, and I told you, Glenn, if I go up there for a week, I swear I'll come back. And you gave me that grin and listened to every word I said, and then just said, no. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. The biggest thank you I have of all is to Jesus. Because the people I've hurt, the things that I've done in my life, being 54, the uh, crimes that I've committed that I didn't get caught for, uh, and he still had his arms open for me. And I owe it all to Jesus and all the people that I thanked. That is the spirit of Jesus coming through them. Thanks again. Go Promised Land. Thanks, you.